Let me give my uh, just deepest uh, heartfelt welcome to all the CA community this weekend, to any who might be visiting, and to whoever may be watching this online, we welcome you. Well, we began a new little summer series last uh, weekend called The Power of Simple Words, and we looked at the game-changing importance of the word no, and uh, nobody mastered the use of the word no like Jesus. If you remember, we underscored that his ministry did not start with one huge yes, but with three big no's. Uh, In the desert, 40 days fasting, and the devil said, you are only what you have, you are only what you do, and you are only what people think of you, to which Jesus said, no, no, and no again. I'm a child of the Almighty. And then we saw that Jesus' life ends with the biggest no. As they shouted to him on the cross, you know, you're, you, 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 you say that you can save others, and yet you can't even save yourself. Come down off that cross. And one more time, Jesus said no. And we ended last week that that no became your greatest yes. But we underscored that in these six weeks together, these words are just simply the ways that we make room for God in our lives. And at times, it is mandatory that you say no if you're going to make room for life with God. But this week, you can't live on a diet of only no. You know what? We got into this and I forgot something. Can I back the, back the train up for a minute? back it up. I looked over and I saw Viv and I realized I forgot. We've got, uh, uh, sorry, isn't this awkward? Uh, <laughs> we, we're going to have about 250 to 300 little ones on our campus this week uh, for vacation Bible school. And uh, we've, we've, uh, we're not full yet. We've got room uh, if, you'd, if you know little ones who would like to come. But I wanted us to pray. I wanted us to pray for a minute for those little guys that will be here. Because uh, our prayer is that there will be more than a week of fun, but there will be an indelible imprint that is left on their lives. That they will look back and remember a week when they went to vacation Bible school and they were different. They were marked and they were different. So sorry for the awkwardness, but uh, I'd rather we be awkward and pray for our kids than not. So would you join me as we pray for our little ones? Lord, we pray for these 250 to 300 little, little ones that will be here this week. And Lord, uh, you, you loved kids. You made that so very clear. And so we pray for, uh, for every one of them who will be here. Thank you for every volunteer who sacrificed this week to come and to serve. And I pray that you'll pour out blessing upon all those who do. But we pray now, Lord, for little lives. We pray for each one that you will touch them and meet them and do so. In Jesus' name, amen. So, all right, here we go. Push the play button. (laughs) So, saying no is mandatory if we're going to make room for uh, for life with God. But as I said, you can't live on just a diet of only no. We are made for yes. Friendship, relationship, and love require yes. Oh, the power of somebody who carries a yes for you. They believe in you. 
They will always see the best in you. Oh, the, it's not as though they're blind to the other stuff. But they'll always accentuate that they believe in you. And they love you so much that they will challenge you, not wanting you to live under what would be your very best. They carry a yes towards you. But all of us share in common the experience of knowing what it's like to have someone carry a no towards you. They don't believe in you, no matter what you do. You always live in their crosshairs. They're always finding fault with you, and you live in their criticism. Here's a fact about every single one of us. You are a carrier. You carry either a yes or a no into every single relational encounter. Now, I told you last week that this little series is about how we make room, make space in our life for God. So here's the question that I want to ask you this week. Do you think that God has a yes or a no for you? Now, the most prolific writer uh, of the newer of our testaments was a man named Paul. And Paul had been in deep relationship with a church in the city of Corinth. And he was so because he planted the church. He started it and he loved them deeply. But they're not 100% sure about his heart for them. And the reason why is he had written a stinging confrontational letter called 1 Corinthians. It is direct And it is painful. And Paul had wanted to go to be with them, but plans got changed. And they are wondering, is he a yes or a no towards us? And he writes to them and says, I have to answer it by this, that my connection to you is grounded in the character and nature of God. He says, this is what is at the very core of who God is. You have a a series of scriptures in your bulletins and that will be on the side screens. And follow along. This is Paul's answer to them about the nature of God. You may be asking why my plans got changed. Do you think I make my plans carelessly? Do you think I am like people of this world who say yes when they really mean no? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you does not waver between yes and no. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does not waver between yes and no. He is the one whom Silas, Timothy, and I preach to you. And as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, and through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. In him, Paul says, it is always yes towards you. 7,457 promises in the Bible, and I counted every single one of them this week, by the way. All of them are yes in Christ Jesus for you. God will save you. God will give you a new nature. He'll give you a fresh start. He'll give you strength and wisdom. His his goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, and yes, and yes, and yes. All God's promises are yes towards you. And Paul says you are invited to live in God's yes through the life, the teachings, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So God's heart for you, Paul is telling Corinth, is a big yes. Now, there are two yeses in this passage, all right? 
The first is that all 7,457 7, promises will come true because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And you can choose to ground your life in that reality. That's the first yes. But the second yes is this. And so in Christ, the amen is spoken, not by God, but by us to the glory of God. There is the yes that God says to you, but there is the yes that only you can say to God. Now, Paul introduces another word for yes here. Our yes back to God is the word amen. Amen. The Hebrew word for amen, amen is the Hebrew word, excuse me, for yes. Now the problem with this amen is it, it, it's so common, especially in the church, it can become so churchy that it loses its meaning. Amen is like yes on steroids. You could translate this also, let it be, so be it. I'm down with that. <laughs> now, my favorite translation of it is by Dallas Willard, who says the best translation of the word yes and amen is the word whoopee. <laughs> whoopee. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. Whoopee. Israel loved this word. And the rabbis taught that whenever you heard a blessing, whenever you heard a promise, you were to say, Amen. Let it be so. We want all of it. I'm down with that. How fabulous to live in the promises of God. Amen. Paul says all of God's promises are yes towards you because of Jesus Christ. So you now can make your life one big yes back to God. Now here's the question. How do you do this? How do you do this? What does it look like? What does is, what is a great yes to God look like? Every time you encounter someone, every time you give them, you deposit, you leave a little yes or a little no into every relational encounter. Now, we are persons with wills. We either will the good, the best, the yes, the blessing, or we will a no, the bad, to whoever it may be. How do I make my life a yes to God? There is no such thing as a neutral encounter with a person in which God is not interested. So Paul says, look, do I have a yes towards you? He can only answer that in Christ, everything is yes towards you. You cannot have a yes for God and a no for any, anyone else. It's impossible. If you have a yes for God, then it shows up into a yes for others. All right? So I want to just mention five yeses, all right? And how this would look. The first is the yes of goodwill. The yes of goodwill. At the core of you is your will. Will you will the good for, now listen, not some. Will you will the good for every single person who comes into your life? 1 Thessalonians 5.11 So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Encourage. Build each other up. All the time, you are either building up or tearing down with your words, with your attitude, and with your body language. 
Now, as a kid, uh, I, I was never interested. I never played war. Uh, I didn't build models. I've never been handy. Uh, I, I never did any of that. But from my earliest memory, literally, I can remember just turning five, I was always on a team, something to do with a ball. I was on a team from the time I was five until I was 20. I mean, year round, I was on some kind of a team. And I've been on a team here at the church, a leadership team for the last 44 years of my life. Here's one thing I've learned about great teams. Great teams are saturated with a culture of affirmation. Bad teams are saturated with a culture of individualized disappointment. Look what you have done to me. You are a disappointment to me. You have let me down. Great teams are always building each other up. Always. I believe in you. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do it. People will come into, maybe before this night is out, but I promise you this week, people will come into your life this week. Their shoulders will be slumped. Their heads will be weighed down. You can, you can feel the discouragement that is upon them. You have a chance. You can be the yes of God to them. You can breathe life into weary bones. You can call the very best out of them. And all it takes is that you will look and that you will see people and that you will listen to them and you will simply care. Listen, awful things are going on in people's lives everywhere around you. Loss, pain, regret, and disappointment you can be a difference maker with your yes, the yes of goodwill. Will you walk through life with a will that continues to radiate the goodness and the yes of God for every person that you encounter? Yes? yes. Amen. All right, there we go. The second yes is the yes of acknowledging people, the yes of acknowledging the other. To be, you, you are made, you were created to not only see, but to be seen. To acknowledge another person is so incredibly powerful. That's why, by the way, don't run by birthdays. Birthdays are just a built-in opportunity for each one of us to say the world is different because you're in it. Your life matters and we celebrate you. Two weekends ago, we had the great honor to acknowledge Kathy and her 28 years here as a part of our staff. And Kathy, well, she would never, never, I know her, she would never have asked for that. But I can tell you there was an imprint that was put on her that will last for the rest of her days of her life. Just because we said, Kathy, we see you. We acknowledge these 28 years, the gift that you have been, and we celebrate you. Now, in those 44 years that I've been a part of our leadership team, I have sat with literally thousands of people. And it has been the greatest honor of my life to have people pull the curtain back and just say, here's the raw, here's the, here's the ugly, here's the real stuff of my life, and to walk with them. And maybe, maybe the most moving, I, I will never forget this uh, all the days of my life, but this is probably 30 years ago, and in those days, I had no assistant. Uh, I answered the phone. Uh, I set my own calendar. And I got a phone call one week in the office. And it was a mom. 
And she said, look, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Uh, and she gave me a little backstory. She said, my son initiated this. He was a junior higher, junior higher. I think he was an eighth grader. He said, he wanted to come and see you. And I thought, well, how lucky am I? And I said, well, I'll be uh, expecting his call. So I got this call, and of course I couldn't see him. Uh, I could tell that his uh, speech was a little bit off. But he just said, Pastor Mark, uh, could I have a half hour of your time? And I was just, of course, of course, of course. So we set the time, and he came. Oh, it's hard for me. It's even the tenderness of it, even as I remember. So he came to the office. I, his, his mom and dad came occasionally, but he came every week to church, every week, and came to youth group. And so he came in, and he had a limp. You could tell that he had a, a physical disability. And as he began to talk, I could tell that he was not he was never going to be chosen to be on the varsity team. Let me, let me put it that way. But he was so tender. And let's just, we'll give him the name John, okay? So he, he began, he said, uh, Pastor Mark, and I said, John, now look, I may be older than you, but we're first and foremost, we're friends in Christ. We're brothers in Christ. So you call me Mark. He said, I can't, my mom and dad, told me I'd get in trouble if I didn't call you Pastor Mark. <laughs> so I said, well, I don't want you to get grounded. So Pastor Mark for now, but after that, it will be Mark. So he said, uh, uh, I want to tell you what school is like for me. He said, I'm tortured at school every single day. And he began to give me the nicknames that kids speak to him with regularity. Today we know it and we call it bullying. But he just said, uh, school is painful for me and I'm invisible. But when I'm come here, I'm seen. And he said, I came to thank you for our youth group, for the people who call me and the friends that I have made. And I thought, that's the church. It's just the power of a life that is seen. Romans 16, 16, greet each other with a holy or a sacred kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. Holy kiss. Greet one another. Kissing in church. What's this about? Now, whether you know it or not, there's lots of debate on this. Is this relevant in the church today? And to my shock, there are vast, long, boring articles <laughs> that are written on the kiss. Now, I realized in all the years that I've been preaching to you, we've never read this verse, and I've never said a word about it. So there's a first time for everything, right? <laughs> here's, here's Mark's theology on Romans 16, 16. All right, you ready? The kiss is utterly unimportant. But what is utterly important is that you greet one another. My son, uh, Luke, uh, moved seven or eight years ago, lives up in central Oregon in a city called Bend. And when we, Arlene and I, go up to see the kids, our grandkids, we love the surrounding areas because it's so different than anything we were ever raised in. There's all these farming communities. And what we realized, the culture is, that it is unthinkable to pass someone and not acknowledge them. Literally. I'm not kidding. You drive literally on a road and they're waving to you. You've never even seen their face. <laughs> but we notice that as soon as we get back to L.A., we realize the culture is it is unthinkable to acknowledge anyone. The yes of acknowledgement 
is as simple as a smile, a wave, a thumbs up, that just simply says, I see you. I welcome you into my life. Or, I want to avoid you. I'm going to shut you out. I send a little no to you. Our world is so cold. It is so small-hearted. The Bible says in the church, just, just look. Just open your eyes and say yes to each other. In fact, that's why for years we have had this uh, simple uh, means of these little name tags. Thank you to all of you who take the time to do that. I'd like to encourage the rest of you if you would join us in that because behind that is exactly what I'm talking about. It's the power of a person who is acknowledged and who is seen. Thank God for all of our greeters. Every one of you who come once a month and just give yourself to just say yes to those who will come. The yes of acknowledgement. The third is the yes of making way for someone. In this world, it is dog eat dog. I make my own way. Now just think for a moment of the people in your life who helped open doors for you. They made a way for you. You stand on their shoulders. You would not be where you are at had they not opened a door for you. Philippians 2, make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Every encounter you have with somebody is an opportunity for you to say, you go first. You go first. In the church, we make room for one another. We live out the yes of inclusion. The fourth yes is the yes of assisting or the yes of serving. Galatians 5.13 was the signature of the church. It says, serve one another humbly in love. That's just what Christians do. And CA, let me say, there is no church that does that better than you. None, none anywhere. Our kids' church would not happen, would not happen without every parent saying, yes, we'll help pull the the sled and serve our kids. Thank you to the dozens and dozens and dozens of you who have either raised your kids or who are younger and who you give yourself to make Kids Church possible. Kids Hope could not happen without the over 100 volunteers who give time each week to mentor and to pray. And our life groups, the true pastors of this church are our life group leaders. Thank you to every one of you who sacrifice and give. You are the true shepherds of Christian assembly. And what if you went to your workplace with a yes? Our world has enough people going to work with a no. It is so life-giving when somebody works with a yes, it is absolutely contagious. Colossians 3, work willingly, work with a yes at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving 
is no one less than Christ himself. Fifth, and finally, Tommy, wherever you are, you can come and join me. The last one is the yes of joy. This is how you say yes to God. You are invited to live in joy of another kind. Joy of a divine kind. Not because every circumstance has lined up in your favor. Not because when you were born, you were the smartest, you were the prettiest, and you have become the richest. And it is not because your life has been leapfrogged over with suffering. You are invited into His joy because all of God's promises are yes in Jesus Christ for you. That is the ground, that is the foundation upon which we stand. Will you respond like David or like Michael? 2 Samuel chapter 6. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She was filled with contempt. She despised him. She was disgusted with him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the special tent that David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Then he gave to every Israelite man and woman in the crowd a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people returned to their homes. When David returned home to bless his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, How distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person would do. David retorted to Michael, Man, I was dancing. I was dancing before the Lord, the one who chose me above your father and all his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord, so I celebrated before the Lord. Yes, I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will indeed think I am distinguished. So Michael, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her entire life. Yes. Now you're going you're gonna to live like David or like Michael. The ark comes into the city and David dances madly, wildly, gladly, and she despises him. Now here's the question that you'd like to ask Michael, and we can't. So let's ask it to you, and let's ask it to me. Why don't you dance? You have this one life. It's the only life you will ever have. Why don't you dance? This week, why don't you get some post-it notes, some cards, and just write the word yes on it and place them prominently where you will see them on a daily basis and let them be first a reminder of God's yes towards you. But let them also be a reminder to you, this day I'm going to say yes to God. I'm going to say yes to my only life. I'm going to say yes to the people I encounter. And I'm going to say yes to the workplace that I go to. Why don't you dance? And this is not because it is better to have a positive than a negative outlook. We say yes to God because all 7,457 promises, every single one of them is yes for you in Christ Jesus. 
And all of them were paid for when Jesus went to the cross. And all of them were guaranteed on the third day when he rose again. And here, here's how the Bible ends. Are you ready? Here's how it ends. Revelation 22:20. 20. He who is, fa- uh, is the faithful witness to all these things says what? Yes, yes I am coming again. All the CA family ought to say amen. Amen. All the CA family ought to say yes. Yes. And all the CA family ought to say whoopee. Whoopee. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) We praise you, Lord. We praise you, our great God.